What's up you guys? Forrest here with the Foco Flow Show. We've got a mechanical video today where we are working on the Magura MT5 brake lever replacement and brake bleed. Hope you find this useful so we can help you get back out there, get on the trail, and find that flow. Like any good maintenance project, you need to make sure you have the right tools for the job. So for the Magura Blake bleed, here is what you're going to need. I'll put a list in the description here. Most importantly, you need that Royal Blood uh, brake fluid and a Magura bleed kit. They're not terribly unique, but definitely something to have. You need a new olive and a new insert for the line, gloves help, uh, a clamp, wrench, a new lever if that's what you're replacing. So you have everything you need to get started. So the Magura brake bleed isn't terribly different from SRAM or Shimano, but a couple of nuanced differences, but the basics are still the same. Make sure you got your bike up in the bike stand so the front wheel or rack wheel is loose, that you're trying to replace the, uh, the lever and or bleed. Remove the front wheel, set that aside, uh, and then you move up to the brake lever and uh, loosen it and level it so that the bleed port is at the highest point in the system. Don't forget to remove the brake pads. The Magura MT5s have two separate uh, pistons on each side and tinier brake pads that are magnetically held in but with a brake pin. Easy to remove. Uh, make sure you take care of that before you move forward. From there, you move back up to the lever. You'll slide the plastic uh, lever cover down and access the uh, bolt that's holding in um, the hydraulic fluid line. Use an eight millimeter wrench to slowly loosen, and at some point that will become hand loose, and you can twist it off and then pick up the hydraulic hose so that you don't leak any additional fluid out of the system. From there, you want to slide the bolt down and then use the bleed block plastic clamps to clamp the hydraulic hose in place because now you've got to cut the hydraulic hose with a really strong pair of uh, cable cutters is what I recommend uh, because you have to then reinstall a new uh, hose insert and olive. So you're going to give it a good hard clamp here so it's as straight as cut as possible because this is what you're going to be using to put back into the new lever. You can see here, installing the new insert can be a little bit tricky. I tried it at first just holding it really strong with my left hand and then tapping it in with the hammer, but uh, the hose kept sliding, so I found it uh, important to, to use a strong wrench to clamp um, the uh, brake inserts and then use the hammer to tap it in without it moving. Once you get that, that's pretty straight and simple, and then you can slide the olive over top, and then the system is ready to push back into the new brake lever. This particular job required completely replacing the brake master cylinder, which shout out to Magura for an awesome uh, warranty support there for one that had started to malfunction. So uh, always recommend using a, a torque wrench so that you can manage how hard you're clamping down on those carbon bars, but otherwise loosen the bolts, pull them off, put the new one on, and slide them back in until it is almost snug, but you're going to still be able to need to move it, so don't clamp it down just yet. Once you get the new uh, lever assembly uh, attached to the bike, the next step is to reinstall the hydraulic brake line. Don't worry about where uh, the hydraulic fluid is just yet. The key to this one is push the uh, brake line all the way into the master cylinder opening right there that you see until it won't go farther in and hold it against the, the brake lever, the brake assembly, while you hand tighten in that uh, metal screw uh, excuse me, bolt, so that uh, there's no gap in the line because that's where uh, hydraulic fluid could potentially leak. If it's leaking from there after you're done, you're going to redo this step, which means redoing uh, the whole rest of this video. But then the, the eight millimeter um, uh, wrench there will get you there. Nothing more than hand tight, maybe a quarter turn past. Uh, if you have the ability to use a, a, a wrench there that can give you torque specs, that is helpful, but otherwise uh, just be very careful not to over tighten and then you should be good to go to uh, bolt in um, the line and then raise the lever so that it's back at the highest point in the system for the actual brake bleed. 
At this point, it's time to use those bleed blockers uh, for what they were made for, and that is to install into the brake calipers uh, so that you can press the lever without uh, compressing the pistons inside those calipers. Uh, so I had to fiddle with it a little bit, get the angle in. You have to reinstall the brake pins before you can slide those in, and then i uh, be very careful here using a that same 8 millimeter wrench to push back the calipers so they're flush, uh, the pistons so that they're flush with the caliper so that last um, bleed blocker can snap into place once it's there it's pretty neat and tidy and then you can proceed uh, with installing uh, the actual bleed kit to get the fluid flowing through the line the next step is to use your T-wrench to remove the bleed port at the caliper you'll see I'll do this here with it attached to uh, the shock uh, some videos recommend removing uh, the caliper at this stage and in retrospect that probably would have been a good idea you'll see the oil starts to to drip out and potentially uh, contaminate the brake lever thankfully that wasn't the case but there's risk there so potentially removing the caliper here is a good step and then you can move to the next step in the process which is to fill up the lower plunger up to about 30 millimeter milliliters to install to the bleed port I found this step to be somewhat tricky because it was attached to the front fork and eventually employed uh, my faithful assistance to hold the fork in place so I could push against uh, the caliper and get it screwed in. Uh, again, a little bit of uh, foresight or uh, retrospective when doing this again would definitely recommend removing the caliper mm -hmm. so that it's easier to lever, uh, leverage the, the system before you screw it in. From there, you can move up to the actual brake lever. Same thing, remove the uh, T-screw that is the bleed port and then pull the other plunger open to about 30 milliliters so there's room for fluid to push in. Remove that and then this one just sort of presses in with a little bit of firm pressure, sits on top. It doesn't really screw in or anything like that. Just make sure that it's sealed so there's no way for fluid to leak out as it pushes through the system when you start the bleed. And from here, you start the bleed, but my fantastic camera work uh, misses the action here where I'm slowly pushing in the lower plunger, pushing the fluid all the way through the system. You can see it up top there. It's coming through the system out top. At some point, you want to make sure there is full fluid on both sides. You do not want to let either plunger run out of fluid at this point because that's how we're closing the system and removing air bubbles. You saw me pulling the brake lever there. That's going to push additional air through the system. You want to pull it and let it snap back three, four, five times until you're pretty confident. You pull it back, push it forward, pull it back, push it forward. There's no rhyme or reason to how often you do this, but once you're pretty sure that the entire system is without air, you can move on to the next step. Just uh, learning from my mistakes, I uh, did the whole entire thing with not enough fluid the first time, so I had to pull everything apart, add more fluid, and then redo it. But here you see we got plenty of fluid at the top, and I promise there's fluid in the bottom even though you can't see it. And then the lever uh, was snapping back, and you felt uh, it feels really loose there, right? You won't feel it clamp in because the whole system is wide open. I thought it was supposed to firm up. That's not true, of course. And now I know, having done another one of these with this system. So these next steps are the most important as you start to pull out the upper plunger. You have to be super careful to not introduce air back into the system. So this is critical. Things could fall apart here. And you'll see that I did go ahead and remove the brake caliper from the fork. This is essential for this step because as you unscrew the lower plunger, that system is going to be wide open and then you can sort of raise or lower the caliper and you're going to see that fluid come right up to the top of that screw. You want to get it as close as you can without letting too much uh, brake fluid leak out and then close up the system here as I lower it. You put that screw on. This is, you probably need an extra set of hands if you have one. Then you put that screw in and close it up. If you do this correctly, then no air will be uh, introduced back into the system. And if you pull the brake lever at this point, it should feel firm and you'll know that you've done it correctly. If you pull the lever after you screw back in and it feels squishy or plungy, it pulls all the way to the bar. Uh, unfortunately, that means you've let air uh, introduce back into the system, and that means you have to redo the entire process. Not the end of the world, but patience is key here. And then you'll see with some fantastic camera work, uh, screwing the caliper back into the front fork to finish up uh, the entire bleed. Not a bad idea at this point to clean off the brake lever and the brake caliper. Uh, I recommend using some automotive brake cleaner. Uh, it's incredible that stuff. You can literally 
spray it all over your brake uh, caliper on the road or all that stuff it literally self dries in 15 seconds maybe give it a little bit longer to be safe but that'll make sure that any potential contamination has been removed and dried out before you reinstall the uh, brake pads and put the tire back on to finish out the bleed so you'll see here uh, the brake is nice and firm with the bleed blocks in and obviously it'll get a little bit more throw once you put the wheel back in and it's gripping on that rotor. So we won't bore you with all the video, but we're finishing up here. Uh, let me know in comments below if you have any other tips and tricks that makes this a little bit easier. It's not the most enjoyable um, maintenance task that I've ever done on the bike, but save some money by being able to do it yourself. It's not terribly complicated. It just takes a little bit of patience and uh, a little bit of trial and error, the key keeping that system closed. So hope this is helpful. Again, let me know if you have any other ideas. And then once you get those brakes bled, you can get back out there and find that flow.